A while ago, I ordered myself this Tesla coil kit from eBay. And I have to admit that it was not super cheap. But the shown electric spark pictures were just too fascinating to not buy it. I mean, I was never capable of creating such long sparks while I built my own DIY Tesla coil during a three-part video series. But anyway, after having a closer look at the secondary coil, primary coil and PCB, so basically pretty much everything the kit came with, I was rather satisfied with the quality. And thus I continued by printing the 15 pages of the manual, which answered all questions concerning the build process and how to use it. So next I did what I can do best, and that is soldering components to a PCB which took me a total of around 3 hours. After the circuit was done, I assembled the Tesla coil, connected it to the PCB, used 12 volts of my lab bench power supply to power the control electronics and utilized a variable transformer to power the half bridge, aka the primary coil. And as you can see, at an input voltage of merely 25 volts AC, the Tesla coil was already capable of creating pretty decent arcs, which were more impressive than those of my old Tesla coil. But why is that, when we consider that the driver of my old and new Tesla coil follow a pretty similar functional principle? Maybe this component is the answer, which is known as a gate drive transformer and it is used to basically control the MOSFETs in the half bridge. I didn't use such a component for my old Tesla coil driver, since I was using two bootstrapping driver ICs and stats to control the MOSFETs. And if you're now asking yourself how the basics of driving MOSFETs look like and what bootstrapping is, then definitely watch part 1 of this MOSFET driver video series. But getting back to the topic. Because in this video we will be finding out when to use gate drive transformers, how they function, how to build one by ourselves and why using a commercial one often makes more sense. And at the end we will finally be capable to answer the question whether the gate drive transformer is truly responsible for the better performance of the new Tesla coil. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the Word Electronic ISOS Group. I already talked about the problem of high side switching and end channel MOSFETs in a half bridge during part 1 of this video series. But as a refresher, we can say that due to the floating ground of the upper MOSFETs, we require a higher voltage at the gate in order to completely switch it on, which is most of the time above the supply voltage. That is why we use the principle of bootstrapping in order to create such a higher voltage. But you can actually avoid the problem of the floating ground if you control the gate of the MOSFETs with a galvanically isolated voltage source, like for example a transformer. In this case, the reference voltage potential at the junction point of the MOSFETs does not increase for the isolated voltage source, and thus we only require a fitting voltage signal. We also get the advantage that the control and power sections of the circuits are now galvanically isolated from one another. That means that even when the power electronics use a higher voltage, which might go up to mains voltage, you do not have to be scared while for example measuring something in the control electronic section, since there is no potential difference between both sides. That is why this potential free or galvanically isolated driving is not only simpler but also safer. And that is the moment our gate drive transformer comes into play, which is obviously used for such driving tasks. In the case of the new Tesla coil driver, we can see that it only consists of a ferrite toroid around which three conductors are wound, with a total amount of 13 windings. 
that means we are dealing with a transformer with one primary side and two secondary sides, which all come with the same winding direction and a winding relation of 1 to 1 to 1. Now, if I for example supply the primary side with a voltage signal of plus minus 5 volts, then both secondary sides will spit out the same voltage signal with the same waveform, potential and amplitude. This is of course only possible if the transformer does not reach its magnetic saturation during this process. And if you have no idea what magnetic saturation is or want to learn more about transformers, then make sure to watch my video about the subject. But anyway, with the voltages being transmitted to the secondary sites, we basically created a galvanically isolated voltage source, which we can use to control the gate of a MOSFET. And if we swap the conductors for the second secondary site, we can even control the second lower MOSFET at the same time with an opposite timing in comparison to the upper MOSFET, which is of course necessary for a half bridge. But enough already of the theory. Why don't we just have a look at the voltages of the primary and secondary sites of the gate drive transformer on the oscilloscope. Now we can easily see that the secondary side voltages come with a frequency of 184 kHz, as well as with high enough amplitudes in order to switch the MOSFETs without any problems. Perfect. The only minor problem is the small voltage overshoot which occurs when the polarity changes, but we could easily damp those by adding a damping resistor to the primary and or secondary sides. Other than that, we could also add a diode on the secondary side to faster discharge the gate, two Zener diodes between the gate and source in order to get rid of over voltages, and a freewheeling diode between drain and source to also prevent over voltages across the MOSFET. On the primary side, however, we only need an additional capacitor in order to avert the buildup of a DC voltage which would lead to an early magnetic saturation of the core. And since we are now familiar with how the utilized gate drive transformer functions and how it is being used in the circuit, why don't we try to make our own? I mean, I got a pretty similar ferrite core laying around, as well as some conductors with a similar cross-section area. So, I twisted two wires around one another and wound them around the ferrite core just like it was done with the Tesla coil gate drive transformer. And the results actually didn't look half bad. So, for small tests, I connected the primary sides with a capacitor and a function generator that spit out a square wave voltage with a frequency of 180 kHz. If we now connect the secondary side with the MOSFET LED example from part 1 of this video series, then we can not only see that the LED lit up without a problem, but also that the waveforms on the oscilloscope looked rather promising. I mean, they were not perfect, since the maximum voltage values decreased a bit during their on time, but they were still usable. But and here's the problem, if we now lower the frequency, we can observe how the waveform slowly becomes more and more problematic. And at a frequency of 20 kHz, it was pretty much unusable, since the transformer reached its magnetic saturation. The culprit for such a problem is of course the design of our DIY gate drive transformer. Because before actually winding one of those, we have to think about at which frequency we want to use it, which inductance value we require and what voltage will be applied to it. Through those decisions, it is determined what kind of ferrite material we have to use, how big the cross section of the core has to be, how many turns the primary and secondary side has to come with and much much more which can all be calculated with relatively complicated equations. 
and even if you theoretically and practically created the perfect gate ref transformer, then there still can be problems due to the existence of parasitic components like the leakage inductance and the winding capacitance. Those can lead to distortions of the output signal, like a phase delay, noise, overshoots or ringing. So what do you do if you want to avoid long and difficult calculations and reduce parasitic components to a minimum? Correct, you simply browse through the available gate drive transformers on the Word Electronic ISOS Group website. This one for example comes with a very low leakage inductance as well as a low winding capacitance. And if you're wondering whether the transformer reaches its magnetic saturation during switching with for example a voltage of 5 volts, then all we have to look for is the volts microsecond value, which is in this case 102. To get the minimum frequency, we simply have to double the value and divide it by 5 volts in order to calculate the periodic time, which we then can convert to a frequency which is around 24.5 kHz. That means we can connect the commercial gate ref transformer carefree with the MOSFET LED example and see that it works acceptably well with the just calculated frequency. Of course, if we go back to the 180 kHz frequency, we can observe that the commercial solution performs quite a bit better than our DIY version. And with that being said, it should now be clear how you can make your own DIY gate drive transformer and why using a commercial solution is pretty much always more efficient. Now let's get back to the initial question whether the driver with gate drive transformer is responsible for the better performance of the new Tesla coil. And my answer is that there is a big possibility. Because as you can see, my old Tesla coil does in fact perform quite a bit better with the new driver. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video about gate drive transformers. Which means that now you should be familiar with all the basics when it comes to driving MOSFETs. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!